Hi, this is day number 205. Welcome to today's readings, which are Jeremiah 7 and 8, Psalm 41, and our second reading in John 19. In order to help you catch the meaning of this book of Jeremiah, I'm reading the section headings and also I'm explicating what is shown by quote marks in the NLT text, namely whether it is God or Jeremiah who is speaking. This information, which is of course added by our modern editors, is very helpful to us modern readers and listeners. Yesterday's reading had this ironic statement spoken by the Lord. Why did the Lord our God do all this to us? And you must reply, you rejected him and gave yourselves to foreign gods in your own land. Now you will serve foreigners in a land that is not your own. Jeremiah 7. Jeremiah speaks at the temple. The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Go to the entrance of the Lord's temple and give this message to the people. O Judah, listen to this message from the Lord. Listen to it, all of you who worship here. This is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Even now, if you quit your evil ways, I will let you stay in your own land. But don't be fooled by those who promise you safety simply because the Lord's temple is here. They chant, The Lord's temple is here. The Lord's temple is here. But I will be merciful only if you stop your evil thoughts and deeds and start treating each other with justice. Only if you stop exploiting foreigners, orphans, and widows. Only if you stop your murdering. And only if you stop harming yourselves by worshiping idols. Then I will let you stay in this land that I gave to your ancestors to keep forever. Don't be fooled into thinking that you will never suffer because the temple is here. That's a lie. Do you really think you can steal, murder, commit adultery, lie, and burn incense to Baal and all those other new gods of yours, and then come here and stand before me in my temple and chant, We are safe! only to go right back to all those evils again? Don't you yourselves admit that this temple, which bears my name, has become a den of thieves? Surely I see all the evil going on here. I, the Lord, have spoken. Now go to the place at Shiloh where I once put the tabernacle that bore my name. See what I did there because of all the wickedness of my people, the Israelites. While you were doing these wicked things, says the Lord, I spoke to you about it repeatedly, but you would not listen. I called out to you, but you refused to answer. So just as I destroyed Shiloh, I will now destroy this temple that bears my name. This temple that you trust in for help, this place that I gave to you and your ancestors, and I will send you out of my sight into exile, just as I did your relatives, the people of Israel. Heading Judah's Persistent Idolatry the Lord continues to speak. Pray no more for these people, Jeremiah. Do not weep or pray for them, and don't beg me to help them, for I will not listen to you. Don't you see what they are doing throughout the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? No wonder I am so angry. Watch how the children gather wood and the fathers build sacrificial fires. See how the women knead dough and make cakes to offer to the queen of heaven, and they pour out liquid offerings to their other idol gods. Am I the one they are hurting? asks the Lord. Most of all, they hurt themselves to their own shame. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will pour out my terrible fury on this place. Its people, animals, trees, and crops will be consumed by the unquenchable fire of my anger. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Take your burnt offerings and your other sacrifices and 
eat them yourselves. When I led your ancestors out of Egypt, it was not burnt offerings and sacrifices I wanted from them. This is what I told them. Obey me, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Do everything as I say, and all will be well. But my people would not listen to me. They kept doing whatever they wanted, following the stubborn desires of their evil hearts. They went backward instead of forward. From the day your ancestors left Egypt until now, I have continued to send my servants, the prophets, day in and day out. But my people have not listened to me or even tried to hear. They have been stubborn and sinful, even worse than their ancestors. Tell them all this, but do not expect them to listen. Shout out your warnings, but do not expect them to respond. Say to them, This is the nation whose people will not obey the Lord their God and who refuse to be taught. Truth has vanished from among them. It is no longer heard on their lips. Shave your head in mourning and weep alone on the mountains, for the Lord has rejected and forsaken this generation that has provoked his fury. Heading, The Valley of Slaughter. The Lord continues to speak. The people of Judah have sinned before my very eyes, says the Lord. They have set up their abominable idols right in the temple that bears my name, defiling it. They have built pagan shrines at Topheth, the garbage dump in the valley of Ben-Hinnom, and there they burn their sons and daughters in the fire. I have never commanded such a horrible deed. It never even crossed my mind to command such a thing. So beware, for the time is coming, says the Lord, when that garbage dump will no longer be called Topheth or the valley of Ben-Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. They will bury the bodies in Topheth until there is no more room for them. The bodies of my people will be food for the vultures and wild animals, and no one will be left to scare them away. I will put an end to the happy singing and laughter in the streets of Jerusalem. The joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will no longer be heard in the towns of Judah. The land will lie in complete desolation. Jeremiah 8 In that day, says the Lord, the enemy will break open the graves of the kings and officials of Judah and the graves of the priests, prophets, and the common people of Jerusalem. They will spread out their bones on the ground before the sun, moon, and stars, the gods my people have loved, served, and worshipped. Their bones will not be gathered up again or buried, but will be scattered on the ground like manure. And the people of this evil nation who survive will wish to die rather than live where I send them. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken. Heading Deception by False Prophets Jeremia, say to the people, this is what the Lord says. When people fall down, don't they get up again? When they discover they're on the wrong road, don't they turn back? Then why do these people stay on their self-destructive path? Why do the people of Jerusalem refuse to turn back? They cling tightly to their lies and will not turn around. I listen to their conversations and don't hear a word of truth. Is anyone sorry for doing wrong? Does anyone say, What a terrible thing I have done? No, all are running down the path of sin as swiftly as a horse galloping into battle. Even the stork that flies across the sky knows the time of her migration, as do the turtle dove, the swallow, and the crane. They all return at the proper time each year, but not my people. They do not know God's laws. How can you say, We are wise because we have the word of the Lord, when your teachers have twisted it by writing lies? 
These wise teachers will fall into the trap of their own foolishness, for they have rejected the word of the Lord. Are they so wise after all? I will give their wives to others and their farms to strangers. From the least to the greatest, their lives are ruled by greed. Yes, even my prophets and priests are like that. They are all frauds. They offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wound. They give assurances of peace when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of these disgusting actions? Not at all. They don't even know how to blush. Therefore they will lie among the slaughtered. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. I will surely consume them. There will be no more harvests of figs and grapes. Their fruit trees will all die. Whatever I gave them will soon be gone. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the people will say, Why should we wait here to die? Come, let's go to the fortified towns and die there. For the Lord our God has decreed our destruction and has given us a cup of poison to drink because we sinned against the Lord. We hoped for peace, but no peace came. We hoped for a time of healing, but found only terror. The snorting of the enemy's war horses can be heard all the way from the land of Dan in the north. The neighing of their stallions makes the whole land tremble. They are coming to devour the land and everything in it, cities and people alike. I will send these enemy troops among you, like poisonous snakes you cannot charm. They will bite you, and you will die. I, the Lord, have spoken. Jeremia speaks. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem? The people ask. Is her king no longer there? The Lord says, Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. And Jeremiah speaks. The people cry. The harvest is finished and the summer is gone, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and am overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? David received the answer to his prayer in verse 5, if it was written before his affair with Bathsheba. Nathan did what David prayed for here in verse 5. This psalm contains gems that are well worth digging for and meditating on. Psalm 141, a psalm of David. O oh Lord, I'm calling to you. Please hurry. Listen when I cry to you for help. Please accept my prayer as incense offered to you and my upraised hands as an evening offering. Take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. Don't let me drift toward evil or take part in acts of wickedness. Don't let me share in the delicacies of those who do wrong. Let the godly strike me. It will be a kindness. If they correct me, it is soothing medicine. Don't let me refuse it. But I pray constantly against the wicked and their deeds. When their leaders are thrown down from a cliff, the wicked will listen to my words and find them true. Like rocks brought up by a plow, the bones of the wicked will lie scattered without burial. I look to you for help, O Sovereign Lord. 
You are my refuge. Don't let them kill me. Keep me from the traps they have set for me, from the snares of those who do wrong. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, but please let me escape. We heard of Jesus' trial yesterday, and today we start in verse 14. At the end of the trial, and as Jesus is being led away to be crucified. It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover, and Pilato said to the people, Look, here is your king. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him, crucify him. Pilato asked, What? Crucify your king? The leading priests shouted back, We have no king but Caesar. Then Pilato turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. And Pilato posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it. Then the leading priests objected and said to Pilato, Change it from the king of the Jews to he said I am the king of the Jews. Pilato replied, No, no, what I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from the top to bottom. So they said, Rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture that says, They divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did without knowing they were fulfilling scripture. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary from the village of Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, John, he said to her, Dear woman, there is your son. And he said to the disciple, That is your mother. And from then on his disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now fulfilled, and to fulfill scripture he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and released his spirit. It was the day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there until the next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath because it was the Passover. So they asked Pilato to hasten the crucified men's deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. John writes a parenthesis, This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. I speak the truth so that you can also believe. These things happened in fulfillment of the scriptures that say, Not one of his bones will be broken, and they will look on the one they have pierced. Afterward, 
Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilato for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilato gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about seventy-five pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in long sheets of linen cloth. The place of crucifixion was near a garden, where there was a new tomb, never before used. And so, because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for the times again and again where the gospel writers say this happened to fulfill Scripture. And so Jesus fulfilled hundreds of Scriptures. This, Lord, is another thing that makes us marvel at what you have done for us, because indeed Jesus was prepared for this task before the foundation of the world, before any of us existed. And when he said, It is finished, there was spiritual significance. He had finished the work of salvation, the redemption of mankind, the task that you had given him to do because of your love for this world. So, Lord, with awe and with thankfulness, we praise you for what Jesus has done. Conform our minds, Lord. Soften our hearts that we would be your servants today. 